<laughs> but of course, we're not going to be that sort of thing. Uh, we love everyone. <laughs> we do. But a man has a right to defend himself. Of course, that's really David Koresh. I got one of his CDs, eh? I got a David Koresh CD. Yeah, I think he played it for me. Yeah. He's like singing little songs. And I think that uh, everybody everywhere has fucked everything up. There was a dude who did have supernatural power named Jesus. After that, don't even talk to me. I've got to do more research. But by their own writings, this Koresh guy, he figured out that the Bible and all the churches are totally wrong. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And it was like, and it had to do with end times prophecy and revelation and stuff. Yeah. It was really dangerous and everybody hated him. <laughs> so I was, I was looking at that and I'm like, so it, you always look at the stuff that everybody hates. That's why I'm like, sometimes you, people say, Sean, why do you read like white supremacist literature? Because I don't like white supremacists. <laughs> I hate them. So I read what they have to say because I want to know what they're thinking. Keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer. Mm -hmm. This is where this comes from. Know how they think. All starts and ends with the mind. With the mind. All starts and ends with the mind. Today. today is the first day of spring, and being the first day of spring, that means that we have certain traditions as wogs we must uphold. Yes, the first day of spring means that you have to do your spring cleaning. The first thing you need to clean, of course, above yourself, is your clothing. Come with me. My wife is not home. During this tasking time, while she's away, I'll be exploiting this advantage of uh, her not being here to throw out most of my clothing. The problem in our society is that we've become far, far too weak. We have a lot of shit that we don't need. For example, how many pairs of underwear do you need? Well, you need a lot. But really, who the hell is going to wear these? You know, there's like, like who made this? What, how, did, how did underwear become this sorry, wretched thing? You know, it's going right next to your skin in your very private regions. This should be some high-speed shit. You, this is, you, I wouldn't clean my car with this. And you got your other, you got your Soma underwear, right? This is underwear I've had since I was in the army. And I, I know I should throw them away. I know I should, but I just, I can't. You know, and a lot of women will be looking at this and will be like, there's t-shirts, every guy's got them. You know, he's got the t-shirt that, Ugh! Christ, and you had every intention when you walked in that room to throw that t-shirt away. I've, I've gone, like, I saw them here, you know, even when we were filming today, I was gonna throw these out on film today. You know, but I just can't, I can't, I can't do it. I can't throw them out, I don't know why. You can have as much underwear as you need. There's no regulation on underwear whatsoever. Always a mass underwear. Socks. The great evil of the universe. Socks. Now, I keep my towel in my sock drawer so when I get up in the morning I just throw it over my shoulder because socks are always the last thing I put on. Ah, uh, some people organize their socks. I think that's just a little too anal. You know, I think that uh, at some point you have to give a little bit. I mean, you keep them in pairs, you know, you roll them up and you throw the other ones in. The wife does this, you know, she she rolls up the socks. And I think that's that's insane. So, you know, you got to draw the line somewhere. I, I, why would you roll your socks? Socks are okay. You can have as many socks as you want. However, and this is important, you must develop a personal hatred. A deep, intense, burning hate for socks with holes in them. You know what it is? You pull it on and the sock have a hole in it and you'll be like, oh, I'll live with it, you know. I'll just go on my merry way. It won't be a problem. I'll just... Have my sock with a hole in it, and then it gets bigger, and somehow they breed, you know, and all these other, uh, they infect your other socks. And no, anytime you see a sock with a hole in it, it must be destroyed without fail, man. Okay, now we're into the t shirts. T shirts, you should have seven pairs of t shirts for your summer and winter dress. Being the first day of spring, you would do a summer winter dress changeover. You have your winter dress, which you do on the first day of fall, 
and then you do summer dress, which is on the first day of spring. Today, it is raining like a bastard. Now you need seven t-shirts. Uh, that's a band shirt, it's not an issue. Looks new though. It's black, it's a nice color. Oh, but it has advertising on it. Oh, but the advertising that it has on it is for a band. Yeah, but .50, are they a known band? No, has anybody heard of them? Shit, and this is the dynamic when we come to t-shirts. I've got a local band that I'd like to promote, but I don't want to walk around looking like a billboard. Fuck. Well, I'm wearing the Rant Radio shirt, but I've got a special extenuating circumstance there because I'm very deeply involved with Rant Radio, so that's kind of a pride thing. Wearing a t-shirt with a logo on it. It's kind of a cop-out for me, because how much .50 do I really listen to? I, I don't listen to a lot of them, you know? So they kind of put their brand on me, and essentially they gave me a t-shirt and said, Hey, Sean, you can clothe yourself, but we're going to put our logo on it. That's kind of what they did there. Not that they're, they're good guys. I had them on the show. They're good guys. And every time I wear that shirt, they would be making a statement about the band. So it's, a, it's very important that you give a lot of thought about what goes on your clothes as a label, because people will label you with that, right? You're wearing Gap, and pretty soon, I mean, I say people who wear Gap, and you get an image in your mind. People who wear a garment of clothing, people who wear a brand of clothing, and now you know what kind of people they are? No, 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 no. No, no, that's mind share. That's the mind share. That's core political using mind share to control how you're thinking. Okay, you gotta get past that. Okay, you gotta get back to basics. This, if you make it okay to have logos on t-shirts, it's, it's a slippery slope. I don't wanna be all carte blanche and say, no, no logos on t-shirts. But uh, this one here, the jury's out on this. So I'm gonna leave this in the jury's out folder, which stays in the keep folder. And then we've got the Canadian Airborne Regiment t-shirt. That stays. I got an old cult shirt. Mm, that's been. Uh, we got a Ghost in the Shell, cool cyberpunk shirt, binned. Uh, I think we'll have a, we got a Call of Cthulhu shirt, with the, you know, trusting Cthulhu and stuff like that. Well, Cthulhu, come on, man, he's a great out, out of God, you know, and nobody really knows what that means. It's a logo for something that nobody knows what it means. A nice black t-shirt, that's gotta stay, and I got a blank black t-shirt, that could probably stay too. And we got a bunch of other shirts here, I got a golf shirt, who the fuck wears golf shirts? Actually, I'm gonna go get a garbage bag, just one second here. All I'm allowed to have here, for essential kit, you gotta have basic. If you don't have these five, if you don't have these items, then you, you don't have a wardrobe, okay? You need five pairs of pants. At least five pairs of pants. You could go with seven pairs of pants if you don't like shorts, but otherwise you need five pairs of pants, two pairs of shorts. If you don't walk around shorts, I don't like the way I look. I look fat in shorts. Well, if you walk around outside in shorts a lot, you won't be fat for very long. Seven undershirts, which undershirts, of course, are t-shirts. That's what t-shirts are. You have an unregulated amount of, uh, there's certain clothing that you're allowed to have as much as you want of. So we got another golf shirt here, which is a lie. Miskatonic University t-shirt. Nice! I was at Miskatonic for a very short period of time. I went down there and uh, was attending a conference that they held in Arkham, Massachusetts. And uh, they're an interesting bunch of guys. Uh, they're good people. I didn't get a chance to look around much. I didn't get a restricted access stack or nothing like that. But I know some people there, and I think in our journeys we'll probably wind up going there again. Thermal clothing. Ah, okay. Thermal clothing we keep, but it's winter dress. Another undershirt. All drab type. A blue, nice blue shirt. Look how blue it is. In. Now, that's my t-shirt drawer. Oh, cool, I kept a garbage bag for the other stuff. That's foresight for you. We'll put this in the winter dress. I gotta do winter dress again later, so for now, when you're doing this on the first day of spring, don't be in a big rush to throw everything out, because I'm gonna go through that pile again and see whether or not I'm gonna keep it. Oh, yeah. So that's the clothing I've been keeping that I'm gonna be converting to. Okay, what do we got? Shorts. Trashed. Okay. And we got a bunch of shit in here. Look at this crap. What is this? Fucking garbage. Get it gone. 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 Fucking gone. Who the fuck wears those? Gone. Pants. Wet pants. Whew. Yeah. Look at the dog hair on this. Hot damn. Yeah. Would I actually wear these working out? Or would I walk around and act like I'm all a hip hop gangster guy? You know? What the fuck? Okay, so we're done. So we got so far, my wardrobe consists of some t-shirts and a kung fu outfit. Now this means that whenever you meet me, you're welcome to call me on it because this is all the clothing I have. After all the clothing is done, I'm not just taking it and filing it. No, 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 no. It goes into the winter dress folder or it goes, uh, well, pretty much into the, uh, <coughs> the, uh, the dumpster. Well, not the dumpster, but you know, those clothing donations. Please. All right. Pants. Seven pairs of pants, I believe, is uh, what we, is, is the, the, no, it's five pairs of pants, two pairs of shorts. Good Marpat desert wear, gotta have that. A hat of summertime dress. You always must have a boonie hat, but I'll be getting the boonie hats later, okay. Shirt with a beer company logo on it, you're gone. We got a uh, Hawaiian shirts. Now, Hawaiian shirts, like 
old underwear, and certain t-shirts have Soma. You have to be very careful with Hawaiian shirts because they have a lot of power. You have to respect Hawaiian shirts. If there was one thing that I would say would be a WOG symbol, I would probably say a Hawaiian shirt would be in there somewhere. You know what I mean? If you would have a photograph of the ultimate WOG, I think on some level you'd have to be wearing a, a Hawaiian shirt. I'm pretty sure about that. This particular one is too small for me, so it's big. Uh, we got some shorts here. Hey, first pair of shorts. I have a desert issue t-shirt, oh, a white t-shirt. Always have a white t-shirt. Always. Just plain white t-shirt. Okay, so we, we still need one more t-shirt. I'll put the .50 in there for now, because we'll put it later. That gives me seven t-shirts. This goes in the t-shirt bin. Okay, Hawaiian shirts. You can have up to seven Hawaiian t-shirts. You can't have more if you find good ones. So I'm just gonna start filing them in there. One Hawaiian shirt. This one's a good one. Two Hawaiian shirts. Over here, a Hawaiian shirt, the quality of a Hawaiian shirt. Hawaiian shirts should cause pain upon the mind. There's a Russian word, that word is lumshabak. And loosely translated into English, lumshabak means thing that hurts my head, which causes you to access things on a level you probably don't understand. So any Hawaiian shirt by nature has soma and should be like a lumshabak. You know, like look at that, baby. One, two, three, four, five, six. Does this qualify as a wine shirt? Huh? Well, barely. Barely? Barely. Yeah, it's got some soma though. I've had it for a while. I'm allowed seven. Okay, allowed seven. Keep that one as a seven. Yeah, seven. Okay, we got the shirt issue sorted. Pants. One. Blue jeans. So I'm going to keep blue jeans because blue jeans are there. So we got two pairs of pants here. One pair of shorts. Kung Fu pants. Ah, the infamous Kung Fu outfit. That's when you wear that, by the way. When you're not going outside, when you get up in the morning, this should be the clothing that you wear to like stretch in, do your exercise in. Uh, very, very comfortable. It doesn't. It, it's for indoor use only. It's not for public uh, witnessing. I prefer the Kung Fu outfit because you know you can't fuck with six thousand years of Japanese engineering. So uh, we got another pair of pants here. These are Canadian Combats. Always good. Got to have them. Uh, so we got three pairs, one, two, three. The one exception is work clothing. I am so gracefully employed that I happen to work for a security company. So that means I get to wear this clothing anytime I want, pretty much, which is fun. So, uh, but black combat pants are pretty much my security dress at work. So that's work clothing. Vests. This is technically outerwear and therefore not uh, not constituted as part of personal wardrobe. This is a, this is a, a, a coat and uh, this is actually a desert vest. So when we get to the coat segment sometime, we'll, we'll, we'll do coats, but vests uh, have the same ruling as Jagger. You have a summer vest and a winter vest. This is my summer vest, so this stays. Another white t-shirt. I need another white t-shirt. 0 0.50 loses to a white t-shirt. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. Sorry, guys. Japanese manga biker wear. Now this is popular. Now this, what this is here, is a poster that they put onto a shirt in an attempt to make Hawaiian shirts. And these are evil. Okay, if it's not a Hawaiian shirt, it's not a Hawaiian shirt. Ooh, desert pants. Nice. This is handy for the civilian wife. This is great. Because, see, my wife is not a walk, so I've got to kind of... It, it's great for you as viewers because you'll be able to see me try to live my life uh, being civilian. So I'll look a lot like a narc. One, two, three, four. Ooh. Okay, these, very few garments of clothing will I ever fucking stand up and sit down and say, dude, you got to buy a pair of these. You have to buy a pair of these. These are the shorts I wore at Burning Man. Okay, if you, if you, Burning Man has since told us that we're horrible people, and, and by distributing free art to everyone throughout the web, we've completely gone against the spirit of Burning Man, and we're very sorry, and uh, you know, so we can't distribute our, our stuff anymore about Burning Man, even though it was, it was probably pretty nice, and I actually got a lot of really positive feedback from it. It's, it's a shame, but I guess uh, Burning Man isn't about that. So, that's okay. But when I was at Burning Man, because that was, that was two years ago. When I was at Burning Man, they were really cool. And uh, they were really cool people back then. I was walking around wearing these, and these, like, I'm talking in that desert, which is an alkali acid, everything's all double-stitched. Uh, these are the chocolate chip uh, shorts, and these ones aren't even reinforced in the ass. They're just, oh, man. The company that makes them, I'll give you the company that makes them. Is this Issue? Yeah, this one's Issue. Nice, it wasn't made. There's a company that makes them. But this is an extra large short. You can zoom in on this label. Extra large short, inseam 26 to 28 inch or whatever. So these shorts, this, these are like, those shorts, are like these ones will rot off my body. I have a lot of soma in there. Seven pairs of pants. Einstein, a lot of people are like, Sean, you're so fucked. No, dude, Einstein had seven sets of the same pair of clothes. Seven sets. Why did I come up with seven as a number? Einstein. Yeah, that's what he did. Why? Because he didn't have time to worry about the bullshit that society puts on clothing. So you got to take a lesson from Einstein. So anyway, uh, we've got 
the shorts, pants, we got one, two, three, four pair of pants. Thermal vest. Now, a lot of people go, hey, Sean, isn't that thermal? Yeah, but it's a vest. You only wear thermal vests in the summertime. Thermal vest is special to gear. This is actually a piece of equipment. Okay, that's how you can tell. If it's something that's designed for purpose, this is to be designed as field gear. This is the kind of thing that you put in your backpack. It's just a standard fleece vest. Uh, I'm looking for a logo. Is there a logo on it? No, I cut the logo off. Good. This is how you sanitize your gear. Uh, but there was a label here at one point. And what you do is you just cut the label off and then you wear the clothing anyway. Yeah. And some people are like, well, people make fun of me if I'm not wearing Gap. Yeah, but you're not wearing anything. You're just wearing a vest. Anyone who make fun of you about the clothing you wear, you make a mental note of that person in your mind. You form a perfect picture of what they look like and who they are. And then you never, ever have anything to do with them ever again because they're idiots. This is a pinnacle moment because there's clothing everywhere. All of that stuff there is leaving. So really all the clothing I own right now that is current is right here. This is it. This is the whole kit. This is all the clothes I have. Other than my other than some some shirts. Let's pull it out. Two, three. This is it. That's the whole nine yards, baby. And uh, it's not a lot, is it? You know? Why why would you uh why would you be buying clothes that, that don't work? Anything that's a physical material item is what does it do, how well does it do this, and if you're worried about the level of technology, think about how small it is. But uh, yeah, other than that, there's really no reason whatsoever in the wog mind to have excess crap. Because the things that you own don't own you, but what they do do is they, uh, they can be used against you. The less you have, the less they can take away. So make sure the stuff you keep is what's important. You've only got so much attention. So focus on the things that are important, like your wife, like your girlfriend, like, like whoever. You've got to focus on that. You've got to focus on what's important to you. You've got to forget what other people say. Voltaire had it down, man. He said, to care what other people think is to be controlled by them. And that's, that's bang on. But we forget that, and we make exceptions to that rule. But there's no place for that anymore. Things have gone too far. We need to get control of it. So I'm going to take this clothes now, and I'm going to, uh, well, I'm going to take them down and donate them to a good cause. Don't throw clothes away. Never destroy. You've got to focus on what's important. You've got to get back to the fundamentals here, man. That's the idea. Anyway, let's get these down to the, down to the, uh, where the hell? One of them donation joints. So the first thing you got to do is you got to find yourself, after you got your bag full of clothing that you're no longer keeping, you find yourself a clothing bank and then you just drop in there and drop off your clothing bank stuff. And that's it. You dropped all your kit off, no problem. Good people will be able to use that kit now. Nothing is wasted. Perfect. So, in order to take care of your shoes, you have to build yourself a shoe cleaning, shoe maintenance kit. Now this is something that any soldier around the world will have. This is kind of a combination kit. I've just got this in a high-tech Magnum box, but I'm probably going to wind up going in, a, uh, in an ammo can. The covers come off. This will wind up becoming my shoe shine kit. Transferring across, you keep old kiwi cloths. Now kiwi cloths, this is a kiwi cloth. Kiwi, these guys here, have been making shoe polish since the dawn of time, okay? Seriously, these guys have an autographed copy of the fucking Bible. You wanna always have a couple of brand new kiwi cloths in your in your shoe shine kit. There are people who make cloths that are like kiwi cloths. Oh, it's the same thing. No, they're not. They have to be kiwi cloths. I don't know why that is. I tried other brands that are cheaper. It doesn't work. You're gonna need to get yourself an old toothbrush. You need an applicator brush. You wanna have a boot brush. Your leather care kit should have some saddle soap. To look after the leather, you should use saddle soap. And this is when your leather gets really shit kicked. When you've taken all the finish off of it, you want to go put some saddle soap on it to kind of restore it. Of course, now it has to be Kiwi brand shoe polish. If it is not Kiwi shoe polish, throw it away. It's crap, okay? First of all, you need a glass jar that's clean. So let's just head over to the kitchen and we'll check that out now. The first thing you want to get your hands on is a glass, uh, probably a, a salsa jar is good. And this is where you keep your water. When you're doing your boots, you need water and it has to be really cold water. 
This is the way that I was taught in the Canadian Forces to do it, and this is the probably the oldest, most reliable way. Canada learned to do this from England, and God knows where England learned to do it. You want to get as cold water as you possibly can. So you get yourself a glass jar, make sure it's clean. You get it clean, clean, clean. Super clean, drinkable, drinkable ice cold water. Now, when you're uh, working, the first thing's gonna happen is your boots, are, th these boots look like hell. But I'm gonna show you what you're gonna need to do. You're gonna need to take your laces out of your boots. Next thing you need to do is you gotta get the mud off the boot. You're not gonna be able to care for nothing with, with all the shit on the boot. Get yourself a high speed jet hose. Blast most of the dirt off that you can. You wanna make sure you get all the mud off because mud is nothing more than small, tiny particulates. So you wanna rub it. You actually gotta get in there with a cloth and get this as clean as you can. Some people use an old boot brush. You can do this in a bathtub or wherever. Get it on there. Get all the crap off the boot. Vibram soles, oil proofs, like proof soles. Give her a quick wipe, doesn't take too long. That's pretty much good. That's only about as clean as it needs to be. Now, before you get started, get yourself some propaganda, lay it out here on the floor. Take your boots, your towel. You wanna to make sure you get most of the excess moisture off. It's a good deal to make sure they're totally dry, but if you haven't got the time and you haven't washed them off before you came in the house like you were supposed to, get them to a reasonably dry state. Usually, most kiwi, when you're putting on your base coat, your average can of kiwi polish looks like this. Very, very hard. Kiwi polish is made of, a, of like a, a dye. The actual uh, stuff they use to uh, treat the boot, the actual polish material itself, and alcohol. There's alcohol inside of this. Alcohol is flammable. Now, alcohol also evaporates. So what we're gonna do is you need your lighter to apply your base coat. See, since there's so much alcohol in the kiwi polish, you have to light it on fire. This will burn quite readily. The alcohol catches and begins to go. Okay, now you're gonna let that fire spread and what's it, what it's doing is the alcohol will burn and cause the polish to go to a very, very liquid format. While that's getting ready to go, you grab out your application brush. Keep this thing handy, okay? Now you wanna be careful. This is alcohol, it's a very dangerous thing to do. Your smoke alarm's gonna go off. When you're ready to put it out, you just cut off the air supply as such. You pick up your boot, your applicator brush. Dip it in there while it's still liquid, real fast. Smear it on the boot. All up in here, make sure, this is why the laces have to be gone. This is an integral part of your boot. Put it around the sides. You gotta do, go fast. Otherwise it gets back to a solid state and you won't get the absorbency. The hot alcohol and the wax suck it into the boot. Now you'll notice that with the boot, okay, so we got the base, we got, you gotta leave it for a little bit. When you're done, seal this back up. Now your hands are gonna get dirty while you do this. That's okay, it shows you're honest in your work. Use your old kiwi cloth as your rag. If you start using your towel as your rag for your shoes, your wife will fucking kill you. As this cools, more alcohol leaves, and it, as the alcohol leaves, it creates a protective layer on the boot. This is what the purpose of polish is. You let it dry. Let it dry, let it dry, no problems. Next, out of the boat, take one of these. This is a boot brush. You take the boot brush, and you simply go over the boot, just to get the excess off. We're not going whole hog on it here. We're just getting the excess off. Next stage after you've got the, the polish on that, you wanna make sure you do inside the welts. Take out your, this is your secondary coat of polish, okay? We're still on the secondary. Take your toothbrush, put it in there. You gotta get in the welts. The welts are the spaces of the shoes. This is where the actual stitching of the boot is. Gotta get the welts done. After, again, you put on raw polish with a brush. Now use the big brush again to smooth it out. Make sure, again, get up on the inside. This area here is the most forgotten part. It's where the most of the wear comes on the boot. If you were to do this once a week, your boots would last you 10 years. Well, but wait, Sean, the insoles would wear out in 10 years. Well, when you're dealing with high quality boots, you don't throw away the boot, you keep the boot, and you pay 40 bucks to get a new insole put on. As these insoles wear down, this whole piece here pops off, there's a padding layer that goes in, you take it to a tailor, these people who have existed for hundreds of years, and you get them to put on a new sole. $30 later, you're back to a brand new boot. No more disposable society. Look at that, oh, muffin. The boots, at this stage, you continue to brush them until they're at a stage where you're happy with and you're like, okay, now the boot is good. And you're able to look at the whole thing, it's clean, you've got the pellet polish all done, you get inside the welts. Now it's just a matter of doing this until it appears dry. Whenever you take your laces out of your boots, you put the lace inside the boot that it belongs to. What lacing is, is lacing is supposed to be a way for you to tie up your boots so that they're effective. The lacing system that I use is a sport lacing system 
which is designed in case you need to get the boot off and you do not wish to damage the boot, you can cut the boot off. It's a little bit tricky, so you gotta pay attention on me here. The first one goes over the top, then it comes underneath, and it goes up and over, okay? So anytime that you're going up, you always are going on an angle in the same direction. If you wanna be totally, totally tricky about it, you can make sure that they all, that, that your lace is kept flat. Okay, after you get that one done, the, the next one you come underneath, you, go, you come uh, underneath on this one, and then you go underneath again over here. Yeah, this is where it gets a little tricky. The goal here, the reason why you have to do that is because you do all the laces wind up kind of going up in the same direction. Okay, and it gives an effect that your boots have stripes. Okay, so this is how your boots look when they're all laced up. You use conflicting lines going on the upside so you get kind of a sergeant stripe effect, okay? You, the reason for this is because if ever you need to get your boots off in a hurry, if you were to damage your boot in any way, they gotta get that boot off. Rather than cutting everything in the field, you take your knife, you run your knife up over the tops of the laces like this. All the laces are cut, you can peel the boot back without a problem. That is why, that is what it does, this is why you lace it this way, okay? Well, how do you tie your boots? Answer, you don't. You do what's called captain bars. This is the way captain bars look. They're simply, you take the two ends of the boots, after you've laced it up, you tighten everything by pulling on these, you get it all nice and tight and snug. Not super tight, your boots gotta be able to just snug. You take the top of each one, you throw it through each eyelet. One over like this, back over across to the other eyelet. While you've got your boots, you're there, you, you snug it up tight around your foot, at the foot and then you tuck these down inside the boot so your laces are not flopping around. Nothing's worse than a boot with combat laces. That's why you never see spec ops, you can never even see their laces, because they do captain's bars. As your boot flexes, these will loosen, and it will loosen your boot to the perfect snug fit. You do not tie your boot. If you're finding that this does not work because of the type of boot you have, then you tie it, but when you tie it, you make sure you tuck the knot in. Now I'm gonna do the same thing again to these really shit-kicked old garrison boots you can probably find in a thrift store. Okay, you see, take a good look at those toes. Right in close on the toes, eh? Yeah, look at them, that's how they work. Okay, now I'm gonna just get these boots to there th where those boots were at. If I was to assign a formal log boot, which I think is the best looking combat boot, it is a garrison style boot. Okay, these are garrison boots, these are Canadian garrison boots. They're also called paratrooper boots from the Second World War. If you're looking for a showy boot that you can wear to the punk concert or if you're gonna wear out downtown or something like that, these boots look amazing when polished properly, but if they're not polished properly, they, you look like a skid. Okay, so if you're gonna put the effort in, you wanna put the effort in on these boots. Now, the problem here is to get a mirror shine on these, we look back at the toes, and although the toes both look better now, the judging of the boot is done by the toe. So, oh, look at all the pits and marks and everything. Hmm, what do we do? Well, you have polished at this point, you repeat the process. You take your lighter and you do it again. Now, you've got these boots, you've got this coating on them. Where do we go now? The refrigerator. If you're doing a major, major boot resto, quite often they'll warm them up on low in the oven and they'll put the boots in it before you even begin the procedure. Heats the leather, lets them suck in the polish. I usually find that if you've had new boots that are, that's for boots that are really far gone, like holy crap, they're trash. You can do that. I've never let a boot do that, go to that stage. When you're healing all the holes, you smooth it out, and then, in order to let it harden faster, you put your boots in the freezer, and you let the cold work their magic with the polish. After they've been in the freezer for, you know, 15, 20 minutes, the polish should be pretty hard, so when you brush it, it won't move around so much. And you can keep filing on it, just really light brushing as though you're like polishing glass. Right, now to get a glass shine, that deep glass shine, you need a new kiwi cloth or an area of a kiwi cloth that has not been touched. You take the cloth, you take two fingers, you pull up the cloth over your fingers like this, so it's hanging over these two fingers. You take the cloth, you, cloth, you twist it. You take the cloth then, wrap it around your hand, so you hold it in place, that's how you hold the cloth. You take the ice water and your new can of kiwi polish. You've got the boot clean already, you've got a new clean piece, there's no dust to scratch the finish on the actual boot itself. You dip the two fingers in the cloth. Now, it won't absorb, so you have to pat it on the back of your hand. Okay, you gotta pat it on the back end so you can feel the water. You see how it's wet there now? A Little bit wetter than that. Get this to a certain dampness where you touch the side of your face, and it shouldn't leave residue on the side of your face. It should just feel damp. Right now it's too wet. I'm leaving stuff there. Okay, the reason for that is just the right amount of water that's cold causes the polish to solidify quickly and 
it provides lubrication for the wax on your fingers. Now you don't press hard, that's the thing. You put a little bit of wax on, you go turn on your headphones and put on Ministry, and then you play a song from Ministry's box set called Fucked, okay? And then all you do is you start on one side and you do little circles the same way over the whole boot. Not too heavy, not too soft, over the whole boot. Okay, now I've got a ton of polish and a ton of water. So what are you going to do? Well, we got to work the water off. How do you do that? You do circles. You continue to do this for an hour. Okay, now when the circles start getting, uh, like you can't really see them, widen the circle and go over large areas. But this is right near the end where, you know, you got to, it turns into a real polish now. Now you're like doing what you think you do with like, think of your polishing like fine china. Okay, so now that we've got all the circles gone, we've worn it in, we breathed on it last few strokes to get it down. Okay, good deal. That looks like it's getting a bit of a shine. Great, so now what? You do it again. Okay. Now, we've gotten it to the point where, you know, you're, you're putting like microscopic amount of water on there to shine it on, and you dry it down, you get to the point where you've got the air point, so, and, and, and send this one to the doing this anymore. So, we're just going to show you where we're at right now. This is a good spot. This is where I'm usually at when people go, if you put the boot on this here now, okay, I don't know if you can see that, how's that coming through on the tape? That look okay or what? Okay, so that's, that's how you do a boot, okay? And now you do it to the rest of the boot and the other boot, and both shines have to match right, otherwise you look like a clown. So the question is, what is a wog? What, is, what does a wog do? Like why, what is a wog, how does it happen? Now there's a Scientology version, what, what the Scientologists called wogs is, is like a, a slur. It was originally it was a racial term that they would use for undesirables, is what a wog is. But uh, I've taken the term wog and I've kind of run with it here. I think that wogs are people who are live by their own codes and actually have codes that they choose that they don't answer to anyone. And they're independent, so they're like a ronin. You know, like the old samurai, the masterless samurai. So that's what a, a wog is, a ronin, but it's not, he's not a violent man. Violence is horrible. Anyone who knows anything about violence will tell you that. So yet he's, in a way, he's a seeker and a peaceful warrior. So I'd say that a wog would be a ronin of an exploration-based culture, not a capitalist culture. Because our culture we have here is capitalist, and it's, it's fucking everything up. You know, this is, this is the world here. This is what the world looks like. This is what Earth looks like. This is it. Right there. This is the area we live in. I mean, it's, it's raining and it's wet, but it's, it's beautiful and there's life everywhere. But we focus on these crazy little cities and, and we're destroying the planet and nobody seems to dig that, you know, maybe we've got a higher purpose in life without getting into, you know, psycho-religions and Jesus wants us to blow up Israel and, and whatever, you know? I don't think, I, there's a whole lot more to the planet than just Israel. There's a whole lot more world than Middle East. You know, there's people dying all over Africa and everything. There's all kinds of shit everywhere. Now, Charles Fort, you know, the guy who did 40 in Times, he, he was this amazing dude who thought that, that science, as we understand it, was actually mind control. He thought that there's so many things that happen that are paranormal, that don't fit into science, that science is wrong, and it's wrong on such a fundamental level. Like, what if magic was real? What if I could prove that there was a Bigfoot? What if we could prove there were dinosaurs that were walking around? Does that mean science is wrong? Well, yeah. Does that mean the, the Christians are right? Well, no. That means something else is right. And being a wog means you're afraid to face that, so we seek the truth. That's the purpose of being a wog, is to seek. You're supposed to find knowledge, and knowledge is power. And we use that for the greater good of everybody. And that's why we wear the get, and all the, the, the gear and the kit and the setup. So no matter what happens, we're ready for it, we can help people. This is the concept of why we do what we do. What I intend to do is I intend to find, get to the bottom of a lot of these things. I want to seek knowledge and take you on the trip with me. I want to go out there, I want to go find Bigfoot. I'm fucking am going to do it. I live in BC, I've got all the gear. Why not? Nobody's done it properly. They've never run a proper alert mission for a Bigfoot. Never happened. But in order to do these kind of things, you get the real answers to really go for yourself, to look for yourself, to ask the right questions, and then have Sumerian film it so I can give it to you. 
No one's done that because everyone wants to make money with it. I'd like to make some bucks too, but you know what? I got a nice little house. I'm all right. I can live like that for a while. But I think it's kind of bigger than that, you know? And, and, and I know it's... Anyone who knows anything about filming and sees what we do will go, yeah, well, they're, they're not making money. And they always ask the same, why are you doing it? Why You're not making any money. Why are you doing it? Well, because we want to make a difference. And it, the only way we can make a difference is by taking these ideas, these concepts, this mental virus, and giving it to you so that you can adapt it and you can go do what you want with it. But Because no, if you adopt the ideas and techniques of logs, you become a log and you become part of the solution, not part of the problem. And then we can really start to do stuff. My name is Sean Kennedy, and I am the fucking man. So you say you gotta know why the world goes around And you can't find the truth in the things you've found And you're scared shitless cause evil abounds Come join